What is up everybody? My name is John Parker and today I want to talk to you about the deadlift. As a classic hinge exercise, you've probably seen people doing deadlifts in the gym with a barbell or a hex bar. Now a lot of my clients train from home gyms like where I am right now and will use things like kettlebells to get that same training effect. Now I've done a lot of deadlifting in my past and I've also developed a lot of back pain as a consequence. And it's not that I didn't have stellar form in the deadlift, it's just that over time lifting heavy loads, and we're talking about two times body weight, two and a half times body weight, three times body weight, you might start to develop some pain. So I'm hoping that no one out there has low back injuries to this point, but I wanna show you my favorite variations of deadlifts, and those are with kettlebells, either a single kettlebell or two kettlebells. So, I'm gonna show you some variations of this exercise and why I like them. All right guys, let's get started with two kettlebells in a deadlift position. Essentially, you are setting up the same way that you would set up for a single kettlebell deadlift. We want those handles lined up with the arches of the feet. Now, the problem that I see with most clients is the shoulder blades start to migrate forward. That could be from the weight or it could be from a lack of shoulder stability or mobility. So, try and bury the armpits. Keep those lats super, super tight as you're going through the exercise. Uh, burying those armpits and keeping the lats engaged will be the key to keeping those shoulders in good position. Now, the same exercise from the side view. Really notice how I'm pushing those hips back on the exercise. If you have those shoulders in the down and back position and the lats are engaged, make sure those dynamics are going so the belt is up and down only. It's totally vertical. And I accomplish that by having a minimal knee bend, but really making sure to push those hips back on every single rep. Really drive them back, okay? Equal pressure through the entire foot on every single rep. All right, so we're gonna be moving on to the suitcase deadlift. One of my absolute favorite variations because I feel like the utility of this exercise is so high. Now on this exercise, it's really fantastic because you can bend the knees a little bit more than the in between the leg version. This really helps out for those who are having difficulty engaging the lats or engaging that hip hinge pattern and they need a little bit more squat out of that first movement. Now, it's not technically a hinge. If you are bending those knees too much, it's turning more into a squat, but I kind of think of this exercise more as a hybrid. Now, if you do have a heavy object at home or on the farm or at work, or whatever it may be, you are going to position your body in whatever way possible in order to make that lift successful without injury. So I'm able to go into a deep hinge on this exercise without much knee bend, but in the beginning stages, I think that it is okay to have a little bit more knee bend until you can really hone that hinging pattern. Okay, notice how the bells go straight up and straight down. I'm really hinging deep at those hips and equal pressure between the feet on every single rep. All right, we're gonna move on to my absolute favorite exercise, the single leg deadlift. Starting with that side view, I want to show you how far I push those hips back and I'm really counterbalancing with that opposite leg. I'm just doing five reps aside here, but all the same rules apply. Really making sure to bury those armpits, those lats are engaged, everything in the posterior um, chain is engaged and I have minimal knee bend on this exercise. I'm not trying to turn it into a squat. So now let's look at it from the front view. Okay, those shoulders in the down and back position. I'm really gripping the ground with my toes, trying to create a really solid base for the exercise. This not only challenges single leg strength, that unilateral strength, but a lot of balance in here as well. So I use this as a diagnostic tool for a lot of my clients. Even if it's just body weight or with a foam roller, it's still a tremendous exercise and variation. All right, guys, I just showed you three kettlebell deadlift techniques. On that first technique, it's the first way that I teach my clients how to do a double kettlebell deadlift. The pain point for that exercise is that the shoulders tend to round forward. So I like to use this as a self-correcting exercise to really pin those shoulder blades in the back pockets. Always thinking of the shoulder blades coming together and the lats staying engaged. 
However, I like the suitcase version a little bit better because it seems more applicable to picking an object off the ground. Let's say you have two heavy suitcases, some grocery bags, two crying kids. You're really just reaching down and picking them up. It also allows a little bit more quad drive in there, so it can help out some people who have difficulty with that hinge pattern by getting them more into those frontal thigh muscles, into the quadriceps. Either way, both of those are great hinge exercises. Now for me, since I'm almost retired from barbell deadlifts just because of the soreness that they bring on for days to come, one exercise I really like to use to scale the deadlift is that single leg deadlift and I like to load it up with two kettlebells. I have pairs of kettlebells like in my arsenal of equipment. Some people may not. It is totally fine to use two different size bells as long as they're somewhat close in size and then halfway through your reps make sure and switch those bells, uh, switch the hands that you're using so you're getting an equal pull of the muscles on each side. But again I really love that single leg deadlift because it's one that you can scale over time. Now, kettlebells only get to however big you have at home. There are even some 100 kilo kettlebells, which you can work up to. Most people don't own kettlebells that size. So an exercise like a single leg deadlift, you're able to work with lighter weight and then scale up the volume over time. So that means adding more reps in, adding more sets in. If you have sets of heavy kettlebells like I do, like double 36 kilogram kettlebells, you can get a great workout with something like a three by three or a five by five protocol. So single leg deadlift is very scalable. You're not going to run out of uh, growth with that exercise like you may with a two uh, kettlebell deadlift in either the in between version or the suitcase version. So those are some tips on the kettlebell deadlift that I wanted to share with you guys. It's one of my favorite exercises for the hinge pattern. Again, if you do not want to lift a barbell or a hex bar, I recommend that you use the kettlebells to do it. And in a future video, we'll talk about my other favorite hinge exercise, which is the kettlebell swing and all of its variation. So I see these guys as very interchangeable because you can make tremendous progress, always adjusting the intensity, the volume, and other parameters in your workout, like your rest period. So I'm going to get to my own workout. Just wanted to share that with you guys.